the test topic design of shaft now what is the definition of a shaft amra ko briefly bolte pari shaft something which transmits power transmits power from one source to another by various devices or by various means it could be pulley transmission it could be a gear transmission and so on and so forth এখানে আমরা সবগুলো দেখবো না এখানে ধরো এটা পুরোটা বই থাকলে দেখবে সবকিছু Shaft is a circular cross-section used to transmit power for motion. It provides axis of rotation or oscillation of elements such as gears. It could be gear, it could be pulleys, it could be flywheel, crank, sprocket, and so forth. And control the geometry of the motion. Very important, from the geometry of the motion. Axis, a non-rotating member. So axis of rotation, a non-rotating member that carries no torque and is used to support rotating wheels and the line. So shaft and axis, these two terms come side by side. Shaft is a rotating member, transmitting power, which acts with is a non-rotating member. It doesn't carry a torque. For the shaft is under always twisting moment. Twisting moment and it is supported by bearing. It has got bearing support where it rotates within the inner race of the bearing. When you look at the bearing design, we look at all those aspects. Inner race rotating, outer race rotating of the shaft. A complete shaft design has much interdependence on the design of components. The design of machine itself will dictate certain gears, pulleys, bearings and other elements. Anyway, so this is the shaft. So by definition, shaft is something, is a rotating member, usually a circular cross-section. And what it does, it transmits power or motion using either by gears or by pulleys, flywheel. These are the main the devices or means by which it can transfer power or motion to these elements or the components. Now, if you look at here, the, in, in any rotating system, in, instantaneous power is the product of the torque and, and the angular velocity. So in any rotating system, the power is given by the torque here and the angular velocity, t equal to t omega. And average power is given by t average and omega average. And if you look here, the shaft, we have the bearing here. Bearing is supported. And this is the roller bearing. Sorry, ball bearing. Looks like ball bearing. And we'll look into the design of ball bearing later on. And so this is rotating here, rotating member. So if you look here, the design, this is one diameter. This is another diameter. And the support is another diameter. So it's like a stepped shaft. If you look here, from here, one diameter, another one is another diameter, here is another diameter. And then same thing is repeating on this side. So the implication of this diameter, this stepped diameter, is that there is a stress concentration here, a stress con concentration here. Any discontinuity in the geometry will induce a stress concentration. If you have a shaft of diameter throughout the same diameter, then there is no chance of stress concentration. Any break in the continuity will give rise to stress concentration. And for that, the stress will be maximum here. Let's say if we rotate here, torsional load is somewhere here, but at this particular section, it will be much higher than whatever the shaft will experience here. So if you be careful at this particular section. Now, how it is supported? And we have this, uh, the bearing, then press speed. Bearing is usually in terms of the press, how it is fitted, axial clearance, axial clearance, look here, there's one clearance here, axial clearance, so there's axial thrust also coming. So there must be a gap so that shaft has slight flexibility to move along the axis as well. So that the axial clearance is there. Very small clearance is given here. And usually it's specific. The way the diameter of the inner uh, bearing and the diameter of the shaft is kind of pressed way to plus minus. So the clearance is given, the tolerance limit is uh, given in such a way that it can fit press fit bearing. Simply by pushing it can fit and then it will stick there. This bit, and then there is another one, this step, the gear. This is this is the gear one, gear one. So gear with the hub, the gear material, tip, and from here it can transmit power. And here also we have something like the tapper pin, snap pin. So these are the elements inside the chapter. Now, what we do in this design, the material selection, what should be the shaft material? What should be the layout, geometric layout, something like this? What should be the geometric layout? And stress and strength. So this is what important. Stress and strength. So you should look at both static strength as well as fatigue, fatigue strength. So any repetitive load, any repeated stress, any reverse stress will create this fatigue kind of scenario. But simply static also, we look also at the static strength also. So the shaft can be designed based on the static strength, based on the fatigue strength. This are, comes under this stress and strength. Also, the shaft can be designed based on the deflection because of the load. If you have the load here, the transverse load, so shaft will may deflect like this, bend by, like this, 
So that deflection also we can have the limiting deflection uh, criteria, bending deflection, torsional deflection, and slope at the bearing and shaft support element, shear deflection due to transverse loading. Okay. So it can be designed based on this. First, so our focus will be mainly here. Our focus will be mainly at this static strength. Please switch off your microphone, please. Static strength and fatigue strength. And if we talk about the deflection rigidity, so we look at the bending. So that means the bending moment, personal deflection, shear stress, tau equal to TC over J, MC over I. So this will take the equation MC over I. This will take, uh, take the equation TC over J, the personal deflection. And personal deflection means theta equal to TL over GJ, if you remember. The personal deflection, personal deflection, theta equal to TL over GJ, if you remember. E, oh, okay. So I can write here. Equal to TL over GJ, if you remember this one. And this could be some, if we have different cross section, that could be summation. Theta 1, theta 2, theta 3, depending on the torque at each and every section of the shaft, the length of the shaft, material uh, modulus, and J of the shaft, polar moment of inner shaft. So we, we can determine what is the, the personal deflection of the shaft. Actual deflection, if I say actual deflection, delta, if we have a shaft, if we have a member, actual loaded member, if we have a load P, length L, so what is the deflection? Delta, P, L over AE. In the axial deflection, we talk about the model of rigidity. In torsional deflection, we talk about the model of rigidity. So that's the difference. And here is simply the cross-section area. Here is the polar moment area. Very identical. P e is the axial load. T is the torque. Length, same. So, um, but these are the material property. Material property. So theta is the angular deflection. So that we can design based on the limiting constant of theta. Now let's see. Shaft material deflection is not affected by strength. If we, if we talk about the deflection, it is not affected by the strength, but rather the stiffness as represented by the modulus of elasticity, which is essentially constant from the scale. So the shaft, deflection of the shaft is not affected by whatever the strength is here. That means whatever, if it is SUT or SY, it is not the factor. We have something like this. So let's say this one curve. This will be my SUT. If you have one, another material, something like this. We have SUT or it could be same. So it, it is governed by this line, Hooke's law, E value, the stiffness of the material. The stiffness of the material, not by the ultimate strength of the material. The deflection is not affected by strength, but rather by the stiffness uh, as represented by the modulus of elasticity, which is essentially constant for all steel. Deflection, primarily controlled by geometry, not material. And the deflection is controlled primarily by the geometry, but not by the material. So these are some of the very important uh, statements. Deflection depends on the geometry of the shaft not on the shaft material. Stress controlled by geometry, not material. When you talk about the stress, it is controlled by the geometry. The strength controlled by material property. Shafts are commonly made of low carbon. So mostly the shafts are made of low carbon. So carbon concentration is low. Cold roll or hot roll steel, such as AI, SI, 1020, Still, I think you know what is this 1020 means and 1050 means. These are probably the first two digits or the last two digits. One, it, it, indicate the carbon concentration and also it indicates the ultimate tensile strength. <coughs> you should look at the text and they will find what does this uh, letter uh, uh, presentation means. AIS, AIS, American Iron and Steel Institute. Fatic properties don't usually benefit much from high alloy content and it, surface hardening is usually only used when the shaft is being used in the bearing surface. The surface hardening is only used when the shaft is being used in the bearing surface. Now, cold drawn steel typically. If we use this cold drawn steel, then typical size is, let's say, about 75 millimeter. The D diameter should be within 75 millimeter. Hot roll is still common for large sizes. If we, if we go for the large sizes, more than this diameter, then, then the hot roll steel is common, should be machined all over. Low production quantity, lead machining is typical, minimum material removal, high production. Anyway, these are some of the manufacturing. Forming or casting is common. Also, it could be formed or casted. Cast, Minimum material may be designed go anyway. So this is one example of going. If you look here, this one, it shows the a vertical one gear speed dimension. Now, if you know the types of gear, I think it's not in your syllabus. Can you tell me what are the various types of gear? Can you tell me? Just very common. This part gear. Evel gear. Yeah, very good. Helical gear. Bevel gear. And also one gear. Now with the spur gear, helical gear, the, the in between uh, 
two shafts. Two shaft, the, the speed reduction or speed increment is not high. But if you use a warm gear, with warm gear, still I remember this one from uh, probably what is warm gear. You, you know Professor M.S. Khan, Professor of Sir, you know, isn't it? Everybody knows him. He taught us machine design when we were student. Still I remember, he said, that one gear, with one gear, 80% is a reduction is possible. So if you have one, a shaft is rotating at 1000 RPM, and then subsequent shaft, another shaft, second shaft, you want to make it 200 RPM, then you have to use this one gear. Very high reduction is possible, but here it's not. So if you use spark gear, helical gear, you may need a couple of couple of shafts, one shaft, then another shaft, a couple of shafts you may need necessary. From here to here, and gradually you reduce the shaft, the speed. But in the, with one gear, 80% reduction is possible. Issues to consider for shaft layout, actual layout, the component supporting a vertical one gear speed reducer. So this is a vertical one gear speed reducer. That means it can reduce up to 80% in one, one go. 80% speed reducer. Then there are some of the things, the, the, the figure seven point, this is the actual component layout. Shaft layout, these are, we're talking about the shaft layout to the shaft navigation to support and locate the two gears and two bearings. So we have to have a shaft, which is two bearings and two gears. So we have the, so that means shaft will be here. Your shaft has to be within this bearing from here. Within this bearing, it will be. So let's say if it's our inner diamond, so it could be something like this. So this is the gear in gear, and so the, the pinion, uh, lower, uh, a smaller diameter and large diameter gear. From here, we can have another shaft, which will make this one and this one. So choose the shaft configuration to support lo and locate the two gears and two bearings. So if you look here, so that means how we have to have, there is no clearance, but should be a clearance here. So the diameter here is a smaller. I have shown only one diameter, but that's not. In reality, it should be something like this. We have one diameter, then the diameter is changing. And again, we have another diameter. And again, we have something like this, and we have a large kind of thing. So this one. So we have here again step. This diameter and this diameter probably will be same. And there will be a little bit of clearance here for the actual thrust. Yeah. So this one gear <laughs> and another gear. Solution uses an integral pinion. So the smaller in between two gears, which is smaller in diameter, that is known as the pinion, and the larger one is the gear. Solution uses an integral pinion, three shaft shoulders. E and K and C. So, so how to set these, uh, let's say the gear with the shaft. So there has to be some, we'll talk about this later on, key and key ways. So the housing locates the bearings on their outer rings and receive the stress load. Choose fan shaft configuration. This is a fan or pulley shaft configuration. Stretch some of the things that are given here. So this is another way. Uh, this is another uh, D solution is the slip bearing. Choose fan shaft configuration. In C, choosing fan shaft configuration. And in A, choosing uh, bearing and gear configuration, and, but if we use uh, the, the what is fan and shaft configuration, then this is, should be the way it should be. There's some of the other things. Bevel gear, actually alone will support it. Bevel gear drive in which both pinions and gears. So bevel gear, what is the characteristics of bevel gear? Let me show here. The spur gear, helical gear, they, they transmit power parallel shaft. In between parallel shaft, these gears transmit power. That means if you have two shaft, one shaft is here, and we have another shaft is here. We have two parallel shaft. We have the line here, line here. So these two lines are parallel, That's possible. I, you can use spur gear, helical gear. But the bevel gear, this is the parallel shaft. Can you tell me the bevel gear? Bevel gear is this one, is the perpendicular shaft. We have one shaft here. Let's say we have one shaft here. And we have another shaft here. This is rotating, and this is also rotate. So here we need a bevel gear. We need bevel gear. If you look in our uh, card or transmission, the, the transmission wheel from the uh, front wheel to the rear wheel, there is uh, a kind of differential gear from the front side to the rear side. We have these. We have this wheel here, wheel here. 
and here we have this front wheel. So this is rotating and this is the one which is known as the differential gearbox. You'll find if you look underneath of any, any vehicle, it could be truck, it could be bus, it could be car, anything, you'll find a differential mechanism. And here is the bevel gear because this is rotating in this fashion and this is a perpendicular shaft and this has to rotate this direction. So here you can neither use a bevel gear, sorry, you can neither use a spur gear, you can neither use a helical gear, you can neither use a one gear. Here there is always a bevel gear. Bevel gear component. There are probably four bevel gears. One bevel gear here, and then so the bevel gear is the the perpendicular power transmission, while the spur gear and helical gear for parallel power transmission, and one gear for maximum speed reduction. So if you know about three things, should have should be enough of the power transmission. The now the most shafts serve to transmit torque from the input gear or pulley through shaft to an output gear. So that is the purpose, the job. Most of the most shaft usually transmit torque from the input gear or pulley to the output one. Common means of transferring torque to the shaft. Torque, transferring torque to shaft is so we have to have the gear to be attached or fixed with the shaft by keys. It could be by splines, it could be by set screws, it could be by pins, it could be a press or shrink fits, tapered fits. So these are the ways the either the bearing or the gear is attached with the shaft. If you look here, in the beginning, press fit. So this is how it's, and look at the tapper, tapper. The, Clamp collar, so gear, and uh, how so this is a tapper pin, like a tapper, uh, press fit, yeah, this is the key. This is the on this side, it is the key. So these are the means of having the gear and the shaft in place. And when the shaft rotates, it can transfer its power either through the gear from here to this gear to the another gear. So that's the, the, the it's very important here. This some of the things here. Common means of transferring torque to the shaft. Either by keys, it could be splines, it is through pins, press or shrink fit or tapered fit. Keys are one of the most effective. Safe fit or common on the shaft for easy assembly. Positive angular orientation component can design key to be the weakest link to fail in case of overload. So this is usually very prone to failure, is the weakest part if it is overloaded. Now, when you talk about the fatigue stress, the static stress, fatigue stress. When you talk about the fatigue stress, so this I have taken from again from the, the fatigue uh, failure. You must understand what is the sigma m, sigma alternate, mid range, alternating, and what is the how it is expressed, sigma maximum. So, this I brought it again because this will be necessary for in solving the problem. Repeated, completely reverse, general fluctuating. So, three different types of loading conditions it could be fluctuating loading, it could be repeated loading, or it could be completely reversed. Both all are all are all will uh, create fatigue stress or fatigue loading. These are all. Kind of fatigue loading, it could be fluctuating, sometimes positive, sometimes negative. So fluctuating loading also will be made the, the, the component will be subjected to fatigue stress and uh, fatigue failure. It could be repeated, it could be reversed. Reverse means the, the, the shaft is rotating. If you remember again, this rotating shaft. The shaft is rotating. And let's say we have torque, torsional, and also we have the the vertical load. So it will bend something like this and it will twist both same time the combined stress it will bend something like this and if you have the neutral axis so it will so now it is compression and whenever it make another turn this will be under compression this will be under tension so it is a kind of a reversed stress scenario a reverse stress scenario and this is a repeated row we repeat we apply 10 kN stop again we apply 10 kN stop so this is kind of repeated load you have the load is repeated so sometimes it comes to zero again we apply come to zero but here Fluctuating load is not zero, not coming to zero. Repeated load coming to zero. So we apply load, also fluctuating, but it comes to zero. So we have one cycle of loading come here, zero, stop. We can again apply here, zero, apply. So this one complete loading, we stop, come back to zero, again we start. So this is a repeated load. Whatever completely reversed, completely reversed is sigma m. Sigma m is zero. This sigma m is zero. That is the completely reversed. So you must understand the three different. Uh, scenarios of loading and accordingly the, the problem says and you have to uh, the various design criteria will come according to these various types of loading. If it is general fluctuating, if it is repeated or if it is a completely reverse loading. So reverse loading is we have the alternating, alternating, then sigma m is zero max and mean. So we have the max plus mean minus negative. So it has become zero. Max plus mean equal to zero. So that is why the sigma m equal to zero and sigma a equal to sigma max minus sigma mean over two. So this is sigma m. So this is in alternating step either the, the, the this part of this part, you can uh, absolute value is 
magnitude. So this is the remember one is the fluctuating load generated, one is the repeated load, and characteristics of the repeated load how it should be here main should be zero, minimum is zero, sigma minimum is zero, but sigma m is not zero. So always refer to these three figures, important figures. Now let's see. Now equation for commonly used failure rate. This I have taken from failure. Uh, we have the fatigue, we have the sodium right line, we have the modified Goodman line, we have the Gerber, and we have the SME elliptic. So we'll take one problem and we'll see the effect of safety based on all four different methods. N is the division factor for, or factor of safety for infinite fatigue line. And so this is the usually the four different uh, how should I say four different uh, category criteria of stress uh, fatigue failure criteria. One based on the Soderberg equation, one based on the modified Goodman, one based on the Gerber, and one based on the SME elliptic. Yeah, sorry, elliptic. It is not necessary to evaluate the stress in a shaft at every point. It's a very important statement. It is not necessary. Let's say if I go back to this shaft again, if we want to design a shaft here, it is not necessary to de uh, determine the de uh, stress at each and every point. You have to find the points where the stress is the maximum or the moment is the maximum, the point where the moment is maximum. So we have to do some uh, analysis of the shear force and many moment and also the torsional moment torsional torque and find where the torque is maximum, where the moment is the maximum. And that section should be the critical section. And that will be ta taken into consideration for the design of your shaft. So most shaft, not this one, not necessary to evaluate the stress in a shaft at every point. A few potentially critical location will suffice. Critical locations usually be the outer surface, always outer surface. If you remember the, the, the shear stress, now you go to TC over J. So see the radius, the maximum radius that where the, the, the shear stress uh, is maximum. So the outer surface always uh, will fail at, at axial location where the bending moment is large. If we talk about the bending moment, so when you talk about the, the, the shear stress, torsional, let's say we have shaped something like this. If you have the same torque here and here, so your tau will be Tc over J. You calculate the polar moment of area and fine. So the, the C means the diameter is maximum here. So most likely, or it will be at this particular point because J, J is a function of diameter also. Find where is the J maximum. So <coughs> either it will be probably it will be here, not here. So, <coughs> and also the moment. <coughs> if you talk about the look at the shaft, so we have to find the <coughs> prop diagram along the axis. You have to find the whole shaft, draw the prop diagram, P, e, positive, negative, and draw the prop diagram, and also the moment diagram. And moment diagram, where the moment is the maximum, that would be that section will be the, the considered for the design. The, 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 where the torque is present, the, the, the potential location and surface, critical location will usually be the outer surface, axial location, so at the bending moment, so bending moment is maximum present. So we have to find, so we find at each and every section to find the, the stress due to torsion, stress due to bending combined, and find the stress. So we have to find the resultant stress coming from the shear and resultant stress coming from the moment. And then you find actually the total stress where is the maximum. A few critical locations. So stress are only evaluated at critical location, not all along the shaft axis. Critical locations are usually on the outer surface from the top. This is where the bending moment is large, where the torque is present, where the stress concentration exists. So this is also, it could be here at the large diameter at this concentration or at the moment is maximum. So either the moment, so you have to look at the moment maximum. You have to look at the, the, the shear stress maximum. Let's say we have something like this and the torque diagram and the moment diagram and find this where the Total resultant stress is maximum, and that would be that section diameter should be considered as the design uh, section. Okay, now what we do? The standard stress equations can be customized for shaft for convenience. Axial loads are generally small and constant, so we'll be ignored. So here we, we ignore the axial. We have a shaft and the axial thrust. Usually the axial load may be the, it's coming from the thrust load from the bearing, so that's the ignore. Whatever the axial load coming from, so this is this is uh, we don't consider axial load is. Uh, uh, constant, so we'll be ignored, but because its contribution to the stress is very small. That's why it's ignored. The standard alternating and mid range stresses. So we talked about sigma A and sigma M. So this is KF, the stress concentration factor from the bending MA, CI, MA. So this is all about the moment. And when, yes. And when you talk about the shear stress, then this is FS, the stress concentration factor, fatigue. Fatigue is stress concentration factor. Fatigue is stress concentration factor due to shear. Fatigue is just simply this is fatigue is constant factor because of the moment and shear. So R or C, whatever you use, the alternating. And so we must know what is the MA, what is MM, what is alternating torque, what is the mid-range torque, and J customized. And if let's say the share the cross section is round, then 
this is equal to this. Okay, F 32 MA pi D. Equal to, equal to, you can substitute. This is pi D4 over 32 probably. And C equal to D over 2. There you will find it will come. So we are substituting the value of, if we use the circular shape, then this simplifies to this one. This simplifies to this one. PC over J. So for circular cross-section shape, you can directly use this one to calculate alternating stress, mid-range stress. Shear stress, alternating shear stress, mid -brain. So, so there are. Uh, so this is the combination of. We have the combined stress. When you talk about the combined stress, there are the stress coming from the source of the stress. It could be axial. The stress coming from axial load. So the stress coming from the bending load. And stress coming from the torsional load. The three things. If you remember the more circuit. So these will all the stress. So these are the source of stress. Stress may come from axial loading, the stress may come from bending, but these are all not, these two are normal stress. So this is P over A, MC over I. This is, we can say P not P over A cross area. This is MC over I. And this one is TC over J. So three different working equations. Now here we have said this is very small. And so this is, we are ignored. So this is not considered. We ignore this one, axial load. Only this two, bending stress and the torsional stress. And whatever the torsional stress at tau, then it is the fatigue due to shear, fatigue due to bending, KFS, whenever S. So we have to find you the, the figures and uh, relevant charts which shows the KFS and other ch relevant chart which shows the KF. So you have to pick up this value from the figure of chart. Now let's look. Is it clear or not? Combine stress into bond misses. So this is one way we can determine. Also, you combine stresses into bond misses, just sigma A prime, if you remember. We talked about too much about the bond misses stress. We talked about the maximum shear stress. We talked about the modified uh, stress, uh, distortion energy. So this is taken from that uh, equation. And then we substitute sigma A and uh, sigma A equal to this, 32. So this is the one. And 3 tau A, we apply this one, tau A equal to this. Sorry, tau A equal to So we get this equation. Similarly, sigma M. We apply sigma m and tau m. Uh, so this is also another combined stresses into mm and ma are the mid-range and alternating bending moments. Tm and ta are the mid-range and alternating torques. Kf and kfs are the fatigue stress concentration factor for bending, first one is the bending, and this one for the torsion or the shear, torsional shear and bending, bending stress. Now let's look. Now substitute bond misses stress into failure criteria. For example, if you use the modified Goodman line, then this is the failure, one over n equal to sigma a prime over a c. So again, if you look here, this is the endurance strength. We have a material where we have the, we don't have the a c value, we have the a c u t and depending on a c u t, a c prime will be, so again, you have to follow the whole lot of exercise. You have to find a c prime, you have to find a c prime, it could be 0 0.5 a c u t or it could be something like, I forgot, there is a value here, some value, if it is more than, uh, some megapascal, 0.5 ACT, and then also you have to find AC equal to, if you remember, K values, K1, K2, K3, so and so forth, and then AC prime. So again, you have to calculate all this, and then you can come in. So all, there are many missing uh, working steps are here. You have to follow. So if you look at the modified Goodman diagram, so this is the factor of safety based on the modified Goodman diagram. And now the distortion energy Goodman diagram. Now what? The, so with this one, the directly the, the diameter we can calculate. If you, if you are asked to calculate the diameter of the shaft based on the distortion energy Goodman criteria, then you can directly pick up this equation, d equal to this. But you have to calculate this one based on your various uh, fact, the, 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 what is this one? The K1, K2, K3 factors and multiply depending on their temperature factor and other various factors are there. So, and then you find the D value. If you follow the D Goodman, similarly with other, similar approach can be taken with any of the fatigue failure criteria. That means in the beginning, we said, look here again, I let, we have four things. So it work, modified Goodman, then Gerber, elliptic. So I'll take one example, calculate all by this four different methods, it will be clear for you. So that this one, if it is the distortion energy Gerber, then your n equal to this, d equal to this value. And what is a and b is there, a equal to this. So ultimately, uh, basically this will be given, this will be given. You have to, a lot of exhaustive calculation is there. You have to use, make use of the equations and then you calculate a and b substitute here. You will find one over n, you will find d. You can find factor of safety if you use this one. Elliptic, Soderberg. So the three different, four different. One is the Soderberg one, d. One is the SME, ASME, elliptic one, d. One is the Gerber one, this is the D, and one is the Goodman one, this is the D. 
it, we may not say this. So good man, D is this one. The the government, D is this one. Then uh, yeah. SASME, American Society of Mechanical Engineers, this is the D and D, this one. <coughs> For rotating shaft. Rotating shaft is steady bending at torsion. Now the shaft is rotating. That means it is a case of reversed stress. If, if it is a rotating bending torsion, then it should be the this case. Completely reversed. Who's talking? Who's talking? Held on to it. There's been one brand that's dominated for like hours of the decade, maybe even more. It's been a video because the laptop changes. Hello, who is talking? Crowd and held onto it firmly until today. So a few months ago, Andy, let me know if I can't, you know, look out for June. We're going to be announcing something in June. You're going to want to take a look at it. It's going to be a good thing. This is 6700 M and a 6600 M. And the short of it is this. This device. Okay, I'm struggling to listen to that. If you keep doing like this, I'll stop my lecture. So for rotating shaft, with a steady bending and torsion. Bending stress is completely reversed, so it's stress element, and the torsional stress is steady. Uh, steady torsional stress, but the bending definitely completely reversed. That's what I said. One part of the beam will be under compression, other will be tension, and the next cycle, it will be the reverse. Previous equations simplify with mm and ta equal to zero. Previous equations, so these equations were uh, mm and ma equal to zero, ta equal to zero. Let's see, yeah, mm and ta equal to, let's see. Now, Always necessary checking for links. So even if we do the static failure criteria in the shaft design, but also it is necessary to consider the static failure in fatigue, even in fatigue situation. So whatever, even if we do the factor of safety based on all this fatigue, we also calculate the factor of safety based on static failure. So the criteria is inherently guards against yielding. This one, ASME elliptic criteria takes yielding into account, but is not entirely conservative. Garber and modified good man. Criteria require a specific check for yielding. So, if you were asked to calculate the, the factor of safety based on these two methods, you must also check for yielding also. For that, it will it, it may happen that it is safe in these two criteria, but it may not be safe in yielding also. So, we have to check also from yielding point of view that it is also safe from yielding. Okay, use one misses maximum. So, yielding this is one for the yielding one, sigma max, and simply the factor of safety on yielding will do for the yield point stress and sigma prime max. You calculate sigma prime max. Based on again, we need the stress concentration factor, mm, ma, and all this. The all contribution are there. The moment contribution, shear stress contribution uh, from this equation. This is one misses equation. And then we find sigma m, and this is the strength of the material, and find ny. Just check. Alternate simple check is to obtain conservative estimate also. There's also another alternate in sigma prime max by summing up sigma prime a and sigma prime a. Let's see. So let's look at this problem. At a machine shaft shoulder, the small diameter d is 28 millimeter. Okay, before I go there, uh, before I let me, because this you can have a look at it. Let me stop here. How many of you? 65, my goodness. 35 students, more than 35 students are absent. This is what happening in the class. Yeah, this is unacceptable. This is unacceptable. Only 65, 66 students are absent. Present. Why? Why the students are not coming to the class? Any idea? The class representative? No, sir. So is it? It is always like this in other classes or only in my class? Uh, sir, a back class also. I know many students are there. Sixty, seventy, eighty. Depends. Yeah, meaning that. 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 At the time now, can I give a pause for a while, or let me do the uh, this one because I'm more Russian notebook. Okay. Yeah. <coughs> now let's look at this problem. Very similar to what I have just said. Huh? A shaft is loaded in bending and torsion, just that the MA seventeen millimeter. TA 49, 45 newton meter. The mid range, so these are the values given. Ultimate tensile stress SQ 700 megapascal. SY equal to 560. And a fully corrected endurance limit OS is given here. 
two hundred. So it is uh, the uh, job has been simplified directly. The AC fully corrected in this limit. So that means they have calculated already point five AC U three three fifty and then multiplied K one K two K three up to here. So AC become two hundred ten is assumed. If not, then you have to find. And then let's K B equal to so all of there. K B equal to two point two. KF is equal to one. With the design factor of two point two zero two point zero, determine the minimum acceptable diameter of the shaft using criteria. Okay, D Garber criteria. So can you help me to solve this one? Now I'm giving you this equation. First equation. Let's say the first equation is D Garber. Let's see shaft design. So this is the D Garber equation. Then let me bring some other. So this is N. And then, 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 then the equation. Then the diameter. Yes, this is the diameter. Then if I go further, now the A and B. What is A and B? A. Oh, so equation is there. And most probably this will be an open book exam. It's not possible to have all these equations formulas to be in attachment. Usually, attachment we give here the attachment, but I will prefer I will talk to my course partner. So probably I will go for the open book exam. Where you can have access to all these equations, figures, charts, and tables. Otherwise, I have to give all this in a separate attachment. Anyway, so can you tell me what is the 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 diameter of the shaft? Just you. So this is the one, and we have this A and B. First one, D Garber criteria. Can you do it for me? Okay, sir. You just try. Can I stop now recording? You can do. You will see. I'll come back to this record again. I'm coming back. I'm stopping recording and then coming back. Stop recording. The test. Test question will be something different, slightly different. You may have to find this value. And also, I'll not give you this K and K S. Probably the shaft cross section to be will be so that you can. I give you the 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 shaft. A shaft loaded bending torsion. I'll give you the sketch of the shaft. And from there, you have to find the extract the value of K and K S. Depending on the shaft, the, the radius, the yeah, fillet or whatever. Class combine kore to mane attendance star kome kalo dekhi. In mane section break kore class se attendance star kisu re beche chilo. Just, I think the same thirty thirty years match to thirty thirty five seventy. The air value ah three three eight point four four newton meter. Air value a na assembly ke liye a equal to Three, 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 eight point four four newton meter. One four four newton meter. So the unit is very important. You must write the unit. Kf doesn't have any unit. Moment unit is newton meter. Newton meter is square. Newton is square meter is square. Then root. So ultimately newton meter. The B L value two six five point four six newton meter. Two six five. Yes, sir. Point four six newton meter. Point four six. Very good. Newton meter. So this is A and B. So you substitute here. Find D. Oh, there are a lot of. You have to use a calculator. The square, then half, and then one third. Oh my goodness. You, you just do it one. I will give you the other values, and then the discussion. Discuss and compare. So what do we say about the discussion and comparison? D equal to. Oh my, my color has changed. The, the pen color should be red. Yeah. D is ten point five two. D is ten point five two. Oh my God! So D is value twenty five point eight five millimeter. Our meter is nearly point zero two five meter. And yeah, so twenty five point eight five millimeter, or yeah, this is okay. Or if you say it could be point zero two five. Anyway, so it is better to put in millimeter. So D equal to. So who said D equal to something ten something? Please check your calculation. Check your calculation. N value of N is two. So we have this. Let's say here, the carbon one D equal to twenty-five point eight five millimeter. This one, the second one, the B. Ellipse. Yeah, the elliptic one will be twenty-five point. I'm just writing twenty-five point point seven seven millimeter. The C one. Is the Soderberg one is twenty seven point seven. You can you can check yeah, later on. You can check this one and the the third fourth one the Goodman one. Goodman one is twenty seven point two seven millimeter. So based on four different criteria, we find the 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 diameter varying from twenty five point seven seven 
to 27.70. So we have the variation in the various design. We find D from 25.77 to 27.70. So this is the variation of diameter based on four different cases. So the last one, they discuss and compare the results. So what should we discuss here? Yeah. Discuss and compare the result. Discussion means, let's say, you have to have one fixed and compare with this, the others with respect to that. So this is what the compare. When you say compare the results, compare. Compare all among themselves. So let's say if we have first one as the number one, 25. So D, I'm saying D of A means the first one, D of A equal to 25. This is D of A. This is D of B. This is D of C. And this is D of D. A, B, C, D is coming from here. Okay, good. So now we have D A is 25.85 and D B equal to 25.77. So in terms of, let's say, when you compare, so that's what the uh, the quantitative comparison, not qualitative. Quantitative comparison. Now let's say, so what is this? Uh, how much it is less in terms of the percentage? Can you tell me in terms of percentage how the D B, this criteria is smaller than this? Because we are comparing all our uh, the 25.85, this one millimeter. Now we are comparing this one with respect to B. So how much it is higher or lower? Can you tell me in terms of percentage? So this is my initial, this is the final. Initial, final, initial, final. So that means if I compare DB with this, so 25.77, 25.77, Minus, uh, just we, if we consider the absolute value, 25.85 over, we are comparing with this, so 25.85. Can you tell me what is the value here? Multiply by 100. Ignore the negative sign, or you can have the negative sign, no problem. So 25.77 minus 25.85 over 25.85, what is the value here? Percent is? So minus 0.3%. Minus, uh, so it is minus 0.3 percent. That means this is lower, isn't it? This one is lower. This is higher. This is higher. So similarly, you compare with 25 with C. How it is? This is higher. Definitely, this is higher, and this is higher. So we have to, when you say the discuss and compare, then that's what you have to do. Discuss and compare. So your uh, the comparison, the first one is the A, is this, and the D e Garber. You can write D e Garber. And your B is uh, SME. D is SME. So you write all the diameter here, D Garber, all four. So 25.85, 25.77. Then the third one is 27.7. Zero and the fourth one is 27.27. So now, now the compared, so you have to have, so this is the tip uh, compared to. Compared to first one, compared to D Garber. It's up to you. You can compare to first one, you can compare to last one or anyone. Then compared to D Garber, this one is 0. Point, the sorry, the compared to this one, the second one is 0. Point, let's say 3% uh, lower. Similarly, compared to this one, you have to, can you tell me what are these values, the other two? Or you can write in words also. The compared to D Garber, DSME is 0.3 percent lower or 0.3 percent less conservative. You can say so minus 1.55 percent. The minus 25 and 27. Okay, so this is smaller, isn't it? This is smaller. Yeah, right. 20, 27.7 minus 25.85. Mm -hmm. what so this is the denominator will always be this one because we are comparing with this 27.7 minus 25.85 over 25.85 times 100 
7.15%. So this one is, you can say, you can write here 7.15% higher. And this one, so you can say this is uh, another, you can have the less conservative compared to Garber. This one is more conservative. And also this will be also more conservative. But maybe not up to this one. If I compare this two, this is better, uh, more conservative than this one. So now the last one will be 27.2 minus 25.85 over 25.85. So 5.49 percent. So 5 point, this one is very necker, sir. 5.49 percent higher. And this is more. Conservative. So this is how the, the so you can put in a tabular form like this, or you can discuss. Let's say the comparing with the de Garber equation, the second one is uh, 0.3 percent less conservative. The third one is 7.15 percent more conservative, and the fourth one is 5.5 percent more conservative. So that's the discussion. Discuss and compare. The compare the developments. We are comparing so in terms of quantitative figure. Necessary. That's what we when that's also true. Whenever you write a thesis, the abstract everything. Uh, sorry, no, even third year now. Then. It's not the time to. So it's not qualitative kind of quantitative figure and uh, comparison. That's what you present. That's the, so. This is what we have. Any question? <coughs> yeah. Any question? But no. in exam, no. In examination, we'll, I'll give you the picture of the the, the, the the schematic of the shaft, and you have to look at and then find the where the KF and KFS, all this. But here everything is there. We have the alternative moment, alternative torque, alternative and mid range moment. Everything is there, and so direct application of the equation, and then you can do it. Anyway, now let's see. Let me continue. Now let's look at the the, the example given. So. If you use this one, you can find this value. If you use the Schroederberg one, use this one, uh, and directly you can calculate. This is very important. For rotating shaft with the steady bending torsion, bending stress is completely reversed. While this one is steady, only rotating member. But this is the as the diameter increases, the stress also increases. The previous a machine at a machine shaft shoulder, the smaller diameter d equal to 28 millimeter. The large diameter equal to 42. So we have, is there any figure here? No, no figure. So it's a shaft like this. A machine shaft, shoulder, the smaller diameter, we have a smaller diameter. Why is it changing? We have the, the 8 millimeter and then we have 42 millimeter. We don't know about this, let's say the same thing, probably. Whether it is here, something like this, or the extension, we don't know. So here it is 28 millimeter, and this is 42 millimeter. And the fillet radius here, the radius, fillet radius, round it. Mm -hmm. Something like this, round it. Fillet radius is here. The radius here, hard. Probably here is 2.8 millimeter. The bending moment is 142 Newton meter, and the steady torsion equal to 124. The heat treated steel shaft has an ultimate tensile strength 735, and the yield strength is the reliability goal is 0.99. Determine the fatigue factor of safety of the design using the fatigue failure criteria. So fatigue failure criteria, if I say, if the question is like this, determine using the fatigue failure criteria, that means all four will come. Schroederberg, elliptic, then all these four. Fatigue failure criteria. So they de determine the yielding factor of safety. So two different things. One is like fatigue failure criteria. Let's see how the problem has been approached. So we have, now we don't have the KF. So if you look at the fatigue failure criteria equation, any equation, let's say if we use this one, we have the KF value, KFS. We have the probably SE also somewhere, SE. So these are the unknowns. We, are, we don't know about SE, we don't know about KF, we don't know about KFS, but these are given. So we have to find, we have to determine all these values. So we don't know about KF. We don't know about KFS. We don't know about SE. 
So these are the main three things we don't know so how to find. So we have to refer to the figures which corresponds to this kind of geometry. Then d over d, r over d, whatever we have to find. So the determine the fatigue factor of safety. Let's see. D over d, the small d, and the larger d over 1.5, r over d, 0.1. So figure A59, if you remember, refer to figure A59, you'll find this one. If I probably, if I go to fatigue failure uh, lecture note, you'll find. So KT, theoretical stress concentration factor, KT, it's not fatigue yet. KT equal to this and KTS from 1.8. And so you please look at this, all these figures and try to find these values. Then Q shear, figure 6. To one figure six to one k q here and from figure equation six thirty two a f equal to now we find k f equal to this plus uh, k t minus one so we have we have explained all this you look at the fatigue failure uh, lecture series note uh, chapter uh, probably this chapter six in the text you will find all this k k f s in terms of so k t and k so we find k f equal to this so first thing you have to find this it's not a direct kind of thing you have to find the values based on the geometry of the shaft given find this KT, KF, and systematic way of solving this one, you must follow the, this procedure. Then AC prime, AC prime equal to 0.5 SUT, since it is less than uh, 735, so less than the probably 1400 megapascal. So this is equal to 735, so this, this AC prime. Now look at this, all this, what are these, all the factors, KA, KB, KC, KD, KF, all this one. So K equal to SUT, ASU to the, so again, so that's why you need a lot of uh, tables, a lot of charts, a lot of figures, a lot of equations to refer and then bring in this value. So find K value, KB value, KC, KD, KF equal to 1 for this particular problem, K equal to this. So finally, you calculate AC. In the previous problem, AC was given. So AC equal to this one, you know all this, time this, uh, this 365 AC prime. Okay. So once we know this one, once we know this K things, then problem is almost done. Then you find. So now we have MA equal to this, TM equal to this, MM for this one, the, the mid range and the TA equal to zero. Why? Look at the problem. So now let's look the alternating torque and the mid range moment. Alternating moment is not zero. Alternating, while alternating torque is zero, mid moment is zero. The alternating moment is not zero and the mid torque is not zero. So what is the condition of this one? So why does it fit into this? If, I, if you remember, look here. moment, the completely reversed moment, but the torque is not reversed, completely reversed moment. So M is zero, where T alternate torque is zero. There's no alternate torque, they may, they, this, this one. So you apply the Goodman equation and factor of safety is 1.6. Two other equations, 1.87, 1.87, 1.88, and turn it back. So now, 1.62, 1.87, 1 1.88. So, so the challenge is here to calculate all this. The KF, KFS, SE. In SE, you will find the, the SE prime is there. From here, you can find SE prime. Then we have K, KB, KC, KD, KF, all these factors multiplied by SE prime, you will find SE. So please try again in the fatigue chapter to determine from this all these values, K, KB, KC, KD. So for this particular problem, probably these are all. This condition gives this equal to 1. And we find these values, this is the one. Now, so these are the fatigue factor of safety based on various criteria. Now, what about the, the, the static? For comparison, consider an equivalent approach. So this is one. And we can also consider the equivalent approach of calculating the stress and applying the fatigue failure criteria directly into 7, 5, and 7, 6, directly here. Combine stress, combine stress. This one, sigma prime and sigma prime. This is also another same fatigue theory. Uh, or directly we can calculate this one. Use one Mrs. Peter, sigma max, sigma MC. <coughs> Sorry. So we found sigma A prime equal to this, sigma M prime equal to this. And I'll do this for again. You can take example Goodman failure criteria, one over n equal to this, and finally 1.62. So Goodman failure criteria 1.62 using directly short, short cut approach, 1.62. Also, we have 1.62 Goodman. This is from all following the methodology of the fatigue failure criteria. And this is a very shortcut approach. For comparison, consider equivalent approach, calculating the stress fatigue failure criteria directly. This is direct. So we have to calculate on a sigma prime, sigma prime. And we can use this one for one equation. Probably I've given this equation here. If you, if you look that one, probably I have this one. What is this? Or not? Yeah. 
one over n is value. So there were one, Goodman one, uh, the Gerber one, and all this. So this you can use all four and determine. But we have to find the sigma prime and sigma prime directly. <coughs> Very same equation, one over n. Let's look at this equation. Modified Goodman, a sigma prime, sigma prime, a c, a c, t. Very same equation here, this equation. A prime, m prime. Hmm? A prime, m prime, a c, a c, that's why. A prime, m prime, modified Goodman, similar, a prime, just substitute m a prime here, and then you can calculate also the n value. Hmm? Also the n value. So that's how it is done here, a c and a c, t. Uh, uh, uh. It's not modified Goodman. S C and S U T M prime. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Probably the S U T modified good. Oh, this one. A prime M prime S C. If you use the this one, so you can calculate other also. Check. And you will find almost the same value. So this is directly from the the static failure criteria step by step procedure, and this is a very shortcut procedure. Only calculate this one and substitute all the four equations. So you can find this is the modified Goodman, you can find others also. Same, which is identical to the same process could be used for other failure criteria. You can find it. Now the static one. For yielding factor of safety, determine the equivalent bond misses, sigma max, calculate, and then the is equal to SY is given, material property, and yield strength, and then sigma max of this. So the failure, the static failure criteria is even much more. It's 4.58, 4.58, while the fatigue one comes down to Fatigue one comes down to one in the range of one point something. So this is static failure. For comparison, a quick uh, and very conservative check on yielding can be obtained by replacing sigma max prime by sigma a plus sigma m prime. This just saves extra time. Calculus. So if we can also find this one, this by replaced by sigma a prime m prime. Already these are calculated. So 3.3, which is quite conservative compared to 4.5. So these are the static fa factor of safety, and these are the fatigue factor of safety. That means fatigue, fatigue of a static one is more conservative, definitely, but the fatigue one, less. Okay, any question? <laughs> so, estimating the stress concentration. Now, the stress concentration. The stress analysis for shaft, highly dependent on the stress concentration. The stress concentration depends on size specification. The standard shaft elements, much as shoulders and keys, have a standard proportion, making it possible to estimate the stress concentration factors before determining the actual size. So table, shoulder fillet, sharp, R over D, if, it's, if it's shoulder fillet, R over D very small, very sharp, 0, 2. And then for bending, we have this value. For torsion, we have this value. And for axial loading, we have. First iteration estimates for stress concentration factors, KT and KTS. So directly, we can use from this one for if it is axial, KT and KTS here, bending, KT. Shoulder fillet, if it is 0. 0.1, then this one, if it is N mil, K6. So depend, these are the conditions of various the, the element, the shoulder field left sharp, and milk is set. The problem will say about this one. Problem will say that it is probably if the problem uh, specifies uh, says that it is n milk is set, then we have to use this one. If it is the retaining ring group, we have to use this one. Missing values in the table are not readily left. So these are the values. First iteration estimates for this is considered factor KT and KTS. Warning, these factors are only estimates for use when actual dimensions are not yet determined. Do not use this one's actual dimensions. So you may, in the design, actually, let's say you have all this condition. We don't know what should be the diameter. You may have to assume one diameter and proceed and go for iteration one after another. Two, three iteration, you will get a diameter. One diameter will, will not vary. Reducing stress concentration at the shoulder fillet. By these are the bearings are optic, relatively sharp fillet radius. Bearing, sharp. So that's how shoulder relief grew. Something. So these are the real design aspect here. Large radius undercut into the shoulder. Large radius undercut into the shoulder. Large radius relief group into the back of the shoulder. Large radius relief group into small diameter shaft. So this is these are various design techniques for reducing stress concentration at shoulder, supporting a bearing with sharp radius. A large. So this is the design kind of technique or design uh, procedure. If we have these are various design options, how do we make it? Now I will not discuss about this problem. This is in this example problem is a part of larger case study. So we please refer to this one and then you'll find. So this is actual design, how this bearing and gear and all these kind of things should be there. This is the oh. 
the smaller one. So the shaft actually this is the one diameter, and as it goes inside the gear, the diameter changes. The diameter changes. It goes inside the bearing, but even is further reduced. So we have to find first where the critical section, where the moment is maximum, where the torque is maximum, that is stress. So please refer to this one, C section, A section, D section, and various diameters, and all there. Perform free body diagram analysis. We have the calculation, the reaction, the stress. So the, the torque diagram, maximum torque is here, large diameter, maximum torque. And we have this one. So we have to find, combine these two. We have the moment, shear force, the moment, and the, the moment, two different types of moment are coming. So we have to find the resultant moment, resultant moment, total moment. You just look at this one, and then you find how the, the actual design takes place in this way. But this is not, we, we cannot give this kind of problem in the final exam. Your time is limited. So we have to think something else. Maybe I will give you the exact value, total value here. So that's how it's given. You know, whatever we have seen done, we have the total alternating moment is there, but this has come from gradual steps. So quick conservative first press, uh, assume K equal to KTK is KTS, and then we find. So the design problem, it's, it's not a unique solution. You have to have some assumption, some guessing, and then gradual uh, as you move do the calculation and then first iteration, second iteration, then it will converge to a, to a diameter where any change will not have significant effect. So this will be ultimately D equal to 40. All estimates have probably been conservative. So select the next estimate size is 42 and check D equal to 42. So again, before another check coming and finally we'll find this one. Anyway, this is a very good example. Please have a look at it. Deflection consideration. So these are all stress consideration. So this up to here, up to here is all. Let me go back to the first one. We have to have this first one. We have done the static strength. We have done the fatigue strength. Now the the second part is the bending deflection. Rod. Let's see. Let me quickly pass through this one. I will pick up again. And to, tomorrow we have the extra class, isn't it? Again, your time three thirty. Okay, no problem. I'll I'll, con I'll continue with this one. <coughs> now the deflection consideration. Deflection analysis is straightforward, but lengthy. TDS to carry out manually. So this is uh, the one, the assignment is good for this kind of uh, the exercise. Each point of interest requires entirely new deflection analysis. Consequently, the shaft deflection analysis is almost always done with system software. Uh, so this is a very tedious one. So, so in the final, we'll probably confine ourselves to the stress and the first one. We'll not uh, focus on the, the, the one with the deflection one. It's not possible in the final to solve. So <clears throat> this example problem is a part of the large scale study. In preliminary shaft geometry was obtained on the basis of design for stress. The resulting shaft we have now D1 equal to D7. If you have this diameter D2 equal to D6 and D3 equal to D5, so four different diameters are again one, and this is the maximum diameter. We have one. Check that for deflection and slopes at <coughs> the gears and bearings. Acceptable. Now we are designing based on the deflection. So we have the diameters. Now whether it is uh, okay with the from deflection point of view, that's what you have to look at. Material selected is steel at 200. A simple planar beam analysis program will be used by modeling the shaft twice, the loads with two orthogonal planes. So <coughs> we have the beam length, the deflection, <coughs> the slope, theta, degree. So that's how the the, 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 the the slope is changing and the deflection is, so maximum deflection is here. At this point, <coughs> this is the vertical deflection. So this particular part area we have to find here x y plane x z plane. So two different planes we have because two different putting part deflection here the the slope and the slope. So maximum slope maximum degree is bending is here. Maximum deflection is taking place here. So we have these all these values x y and x z and the total is this one total all the values anyway. This is not recommended again for your final, I'm telling you, just for your understanding and knowledge, you must look at here. For any deflection, any the larger than allowed, since I is proportional to D4, a new diameter, the old, act of safety, the old, all similarly for slopes. This is the deflection and this is the slope equation, D new, D old. Determine the largest D new, D old ratio, then multiply all the ratio. So, figure <coughs> example, send the previous one with the application of the deflection point of view. We have the, all these values and D new, D old. Anyway, so you should look at this, not and then the angular deflection theta. So this we have seen in the in the in the, in the mechanics of material when you talk about the torsion, the the the, the load, axial load, and the torsional load. Then theta equal to T L over G J. 
and theta constant, theta should be within the same T over this. this is the same material, G is constant, torque same, only the Li over Gi, what should it be? And the torsional stiffness, summation of 1 over K equal to Ki, so Ki of the shaft. And we have the critical speed, anyway, I think that should be, I'm quickly passing, there's one front, so this is how it is, this is the shaft, this could be the gear, and now this is the locked. The shaft and the gear are locked by this, it would be the, the, the used to secure rotating elements and to transmit torque. This are locked between the shaft and gear. It could be this square shaft, circular. It could be the through a pin kind of thing all the way. So locking the gear and the shaft. This another one. So various tapered one. So various way, means of locking the gear and the shaft or the bearing and the shaft. Tapered pin size. So maximum again. So we have these values. So tapered pin. D equal to D, D or any, anyway, probably I'll not go for this one. Key is, because it's not in your, as far as I understood, this is not there. Key is coming in standard square. So, but you must know that this is how it's locked. Key is coming in square, standard square, and equal size, the shaft diameter determined. So, we have the shaft diameter and key size, width and uh, depth, height, and all this. You can pick up the values. Failure of keys is by either direct shear or the stress. Like, uh, the key length is limited to half length. Key length should not exceed 1.5 times the shaft diameter. So this is very important. Key length of the key must not exceed 1.5 times the diameter to avoid problems from twisting. Multiple keys may be used to carry greater torque, typically oriented 90 degree from one another. So if the torque is high, then it, you may have to use multiple keys. Uh, <coughs> Statistically, is sometimes used with the key for axial positioning and minimize the rotational and the, <coughs> the give head key. Tapered, see, <coughs> the shaft would be the bearing, and so this is the how it is locked. Woodruff, this also very important, the very famous Woodruff key, have a deeper penetration like this. The so most uh, is on the, the shaft, and this is on the bearing. Yeah. Maximum penetration here, so it can lock with when he is near the shoulder, the key waste is something. So this is the again, as the shaft the geometry discontinuity starts at this point. So this is the prone to failure. So we have to consider this one. Woodruff key, some of this one. Woodruff key, again, stress constant factor for the keys. So please refer. <coughs> yeah, this is the design, key design probably here. Given, they have to hit treated a minimum in listening of this as a diameter of 36 uh, millimeter. The shaft rotates to the RPM. It doesn't currently convert through a gear. Select the appropriate key for, for the gear. So this is the key for the gear selection, you look at this problem. So we have to find, look at the analysis of the force and then what should be the size, A and B, square or rectangular. So ultimately we have this torque and then force, T over R, well, SSY, 0.577, the distortion energy theory applies. And this one, and finally we find failure, SSY, L equal to 0 0.0357 millimeter, the half length. So it would be therefore have an ample strength since it would probably be a 36 millimeter or longer. The half length of the gear is used. Anyway, so let me stop and go back to something else. Stop here. So my focus will be my focus will be on the stress, the first part. In your for your exam and other things, you should refer to the let me see, what is this one? Lecture four traditional failure shape design. This one again share. So this one you consider concentrate on this part. And these are for your uh, continuation of the syllabus uh, for understanding. So we can do the also based on the deflection, bending deflection, torsional deflection. But this is, I will not recommend this one for your final. So, final exam question will be from this part the static, fatigue, all four different types of fatigue criteria. Then you try to understand this one anyway. So, this one, let me see. This part is done for the time being. Stop share now. I'll take another one. The, the, the share screen. Where is my notebook? My notebook. Okay, share now. I have another example here a solid shaft. This is a, the torsional shaft. A solid shaft is to transmit 500 kilowatt at 200 rpm without exceeding the yield strength in shear or twisting through more than four degrees. In a length of L equal to 2 meter, calculate the required diameter of the shaft. Can you try this problem? <coughs> this is also the twisting uh, the, the shaft rotating at 200 rpm, the n equal to 200 rpm, sorry, 1200 rpm, the power 
equal to 500 kilowatt. Transmitting 500 kilowatt power, the length of the shaft L equal to 2 meter. Calculate the required diameter of the shaft. What is the diameter of the shaft? And we have the four degrees, theta. So we have theta, if you remember, theta equal to T L over G and J. G is given. Factor of safety is there. Shear and strength. The shaft is made of steel with shear S Y S. 300 megapascal. You have to determine. What do you have to determine? Calculate. Determine the diameter. Calculate the required diameter. What is the D? D of the shaft. So how to do this problem? The power is given. So we don't know what the torque. You remember we have seen P equal to T omega. We have N. Can you tell me what should be the top? We know T. P is there. Omega is a function of N. Can you tell me what should be the top? Probably in L, cannot you find? In any of. P equal to T omega. Find the top. Omega equal to? Omega equal to? What is omega and how is omega and N related? How is omega and N? The angular speed, omega equal to what? Two by n. By n. So your t should be p over omega, and p equal to so p over two by n. Am I right? Now kilowatts. So it should be all in basic unit. Five hundred. To 10 to the power 3 over 2 pi what is the, the value of 1500 oh there is another missing 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 this is rpm kilowatt the second factor is there something like there is something yeah, yeah, right, 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 right. There is a constant, there is a direct from I'm not now. What is can you tell me what is the value of 10 to the power 3 over 2 pi? 10 to the power 3, because this will come as a constant. Directly we can use. And this RPM. So it has to be converted into a second. Divided by 6.31. Uh, what is it? 10 to the 3 over 2 pi? Um, so, TL value is 66.31. Uh, 10 to the power 3 by 2 pi L value is 159.15. 159.15. Yes, sir. Um, so, 9.54 into 10 to the power 3. 9.54 into 10. That's what I do. Here. Because this RPM, a kilowatt, is related to the, if you say the watt, what is that watt? Newton meter per second. This is, so there is a division of 60. RPM should be converted to RPS, 12 and RPM. That means what that means there's a 60 term here. 60 is here. So basically, we can directly, there is one direct equation. Probably I've given somewhere in a probably if you look here, if we have the T equal to 95, this is coming from here. 9.5 and if you convert this pi equal to 3.143 and other uh, decimal points after a couple of 9.549 we got 9.540 basically 9.540 but if you have this more decimal points you add after so it will be 9.549 times kilowatt p times kilowatt over n and n is an rpm Directly you can substitute any good RPM and that you will find. So can you tell me what is this value coming? This is I give you the value directly. So you know from basic um, omega equal to 2 pi n, and this is n should be RPS. That means the 60 n over 60 basically is n over 60. N over 60, then 60 is going up. <clears throat> so you can calculate the torque. First thing you can calculate the torque. Let me see. Can I move this? Uh, 
uh, this because how to move this on shift i cannot have the the the, the if i press the enter no it is not moving anyway you calculate the torque value can you calculate the torque you can use directly this equation if we have the n is rpm the the power is in kilowatt then 9549 times kilowatt so you'll find torque equal to how much this one 7.95 huh? 7.95 ইনার্পিএস 9549 so 9549 Over should be for something like around 4,000 something. So 3978.75. Uh, 3975.78.75. Let's say 8. So this one is in Newton meter. So this is my torque. We found one thing, so torque. So now, once we know the torque, so what to do now once we know the torque then my space i don't know i lost my space why to take this problem let me take this problem for a uh, text ah for the text draw not draw i don't want to draw home oh. why did the my my how to insert my text here so we have calculated p equal to sorry the torque equal to 3978 okay let me come here now so this is the continuation of the problem so t equal we got 3979 3979.3978 3979 3978 3978 3978.8 let's point it newton meter so what should be the value now what should be the other things design of shaft now we know the tau equal to tc over j tau equal to tc over j hmm? tau equal to tc over j so the diameter we have to find the diameter isn't it so j what is the value of j of this pi over 2 can you tell me c4 if you see here d power 4 or it should be 2t per pi c to the power 3 hmm? okay you understand So simply the diameter of the shaft. So J polar moment of inertia for solid circular shaft pi over two c to the power four. So we are simplifying. So tau equal to. The, there are two constant. One is the shaft is loaded. The no, this one. Calculate the diameter of the shaft. The shaft is made of a steel with shear and strength three hundred megapascal. Factor of safety one point five. And so and the angular the the twisting the shear or the the without exceeding the yield strength in shear. There are two two aspect. 
the one is the 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 without exceeding the yield strength in shear the, the the shaft is rotating at 200 rpm transmitting 500 kilowatt power in shear or twisting in, in shear it has got the strength 300 megapascal with factor of 51.5 or in twisting it has got four degrees in two meter length shaft so we have to consider we have to determine calculate the diameter based on the shear yield strength we have to consider calculate the diameter based on the the, the this limitation the angular twist four degree so there are two equations will come here that what i'm saying so first one is the shear tc over j and this this t the shear stress we have the shear 300 with factor of safety so my tau allowable will be 300 over 1.5 equal to 2 t over c so you calculate c here you will find one value of c here and also you'll find one value of c, of c here again j equal to pi over 2 c to the g is given t is given l is given so you will find c here c based on theta c on theta and this is c on tau so j equal to again pi over 2 c to the power 4 so you will find c value theta is known 4 degree converted to radian so you will find the c value you will find c here one value here one value here and take so let's say you get if whichever is larger you consider this one c theta and so if you calculate theta let me give you if this is if you calculate you'll find this one probably 23.6 millimeter 23.6 millimeter sorry 23 point not 3 23.3 millimeter and if you consider based on theta you'll find this value equal to 30.9 this is 30.9 millimeter so which one to choose whether you choose this one or this one if you choose this one 23.3 mm so it will fail here because for the angular twist for 4 degree, the diameter must be, so the radius must be 30.9. So the diameter will be twice. So it will be 61.8 millimeter or it would be 46.6 millimeter. So if you consider this one, it will fail here. But if you consider this diameter, it will sustain. It will not fail also in terms of shear. So your diameter will be this, the, your the chosen diameter or the design diameter will be 61. So this problem we considered based on the shear and based on the angular deflection. Angular deflection is 4 degree, and best, for angular deflection 4 degree, we need a diameter of 51.8. For shear stress point of view, we need a diameter of 46. So comparing these two, which will sustain both angular deflection and the shear deflection, we must choose this one, 61.8 millimeter. Is it clear? If not, then I will take again. Uh, so you please uh, solve this one and find out that this is right. 23.3 mm radius, 30.9 millimeter radius, theta equal to this. This problem usually we teach in mechanics of material. Mechanism material we teach in, but I don't know whether you have been taught this one. Anyway, so please try this one. Try this problem. This is a very good exercise for understanding of this power transmission and the, the required diameter of the shaft. Because in torsion, I see this, this is in the syllabus. We have to find the diameter based on the stress point of view, required diameter of the shaft in torsion. From when you talk of the torsion, there are two aspects we see one is the shear stress and one is the deflection, angular rotation, angular twist. And then we find this one. I think let me start. A the solid circular shaft is to transmit 500 kilowatt uh, power at 1200 rpm. It uh, without exceeding the yield shear in a twisting through more than four degrees in length. Calculate. So you can do it a condition that was it. shear yield strength, correct the rotation theta. So you have to find the diameter based on these two options. Without exceeding the yield share strength, without exceeding the yield share strength in shear or in all those a twisting through more than four degrees. Hmm. So there are two options. One, the constraint, there are two constraints here, two constraints. One is angle and one is the material strength. There are two things. One is the angle, one is the material strength. Actor of angle, theta, or actor of material strength. One is the material strength. So you have to find the diameter D. D of the shaft based on theta, D of the shaft based on the material strength. Two things. Now, based on the material strength is coming from that equation tau equal to T C over J. Now you substitute the C means the radius of the shaft. J is the polar moment, T torque, and find the torque given the power is given. So P equal to T omega. So you can find the torque. And T, the tau, shear stress. This is the shear stress because of the applied torque. Now, this shear stress has to be related to the material strength. This must be related to material shear yield strength. So this has to be given, shear yield strength. And it is given, shear yield strength equal to 300 megapascal. 
our material shares tank. So if we apply the torque and if we keep on increasing the torque, it must not exceed this value. If it exceeds, then material will start yielding. But we do not allow the torque to go up to this level. We induce a factor of safety. In the design, always we have a factor of safety. And that factor of safety is given as 1.5. Factor of safety is 1.5 here. 1.5. So basically, we are not allowing this one. We are allowing this up to the shear yeah. strength limit is 300 over 1.5. So this is what tau is. So we are applying tau, tau equal to tau equal to 300 over 1.5. If, if I say the factor of safety equal to 1, then it should be simply 300 megapascal. If I say it's 2, it should be divided by 2. So that is how it's coming. Now, based on, so we know this one. We know tor. Now, simply, so you can simplify this one. So this, this has got pi over 2, c to the power 4, and c, so c, c to the power 3, 2t over pi c to the power 3, and you can find this value of c. So you'll find the value of c based on the, this equation. Here, the equation tau, we can say tau allowable. Allowable means this over this. Strength over the factor of safety, allowable means the strength over the factor of safety. I don't know why my writing, I'm writing on this uh, Wacom digital board, I don't know what is happening. So this is tau allowable, and this is equal to, we you know, this is equal to dc over j. So you find, this is known, you can find c, so you'll find the diameter of the c, you'll find from here. And we have another equation based on the rotation, theta. Theta equal to tl over gj. You find so theta is given, we know torque, we know length, g is given, j means pi over 2 c to the power. So you'll find c here also. You'll find c based on theta, and you'll find c based on tau. Two values you'll find one here, one here. So and you should accept whichever is the larger. So if you get, let's say, theta equal to something like just an example, you get theta equal to cz equal to 15 uh, c uh, radius, 15 millimeter, and you get here 20 millimeter. So if you select 50 millimeter, then it will survive a level of strength. But if you twist it for degree, it will fail. Because to sustain or to prevent from failure, it requires a minimum radius of 20 millimeter. But if you select 20 millimeter, then it is OK here. And it should be OK. So you pick up the radius, the larger radius, whichever is the larger, you pick up that one. So this is from fundamental concept of uh, finding the diameter based on if you have the two options shear yield strength and the rotation, the angular deformation theta, then you choose a pickup. So in our case, probably we found 23.3 and 30.9. Sorry, we found here 23.3. We found this one. Yeah. No. Yeah. We found 23.3 here. This one we found 23.3. 23.3 millimeter. And this one we found 30.9. Exact value 30.9. So this is our selection. So you have to say, you have to make a statement that since the, the torque required by the angular deformation is larger than the torque required by the shear yield stress, the diameter to be selected is two times of this one, 61.8 millimeter. That's the final. Yeah. Yes. So that's the observation and that's your uh, final comment on the result. Calculate the required diameter of the shaft. Calculate the required diameter of the shaft.